I've had this thing for well over a month now. I've put a ton of packs through it and I wanted to let you guys know how it's been holding up because I think that's a pretty important factor in any product in this category. So the first, first of all, the biggest complaint I had with it from the very beginning was that the camera was just not good, just a really bad FPV camera. So that's the first thing I did after I shot that first video. I took it apart and I put a FXT T80 in there. Now, I don't think this camera is even for sale anymore, but um, I happened to have a couple left over from a long time ago and I shoved it in there. It happened to fit perfectly. I don't expect it to be able to fit a nano camera and the camera that I put in there is about three and a half grams heavier than the stock camera. So I'm already running at a three and a half gram uh, handicap. Seems to handle the, the the extra weight no problem. I've also, oh, another thing about the camera is that there's a camera plug on the board inside. So if you do want to swap the camera, you just unscrew the bottom and you just unplug the camera and plug another one in, which is really super nice. As you can see, I've also stuck the antennas out of the quad to get a little bit better uh, signal performance and the control antenna, this is a great location for the control antenna, it just happened to find it. And I'm getting surprisingly good range on this thing, better than any of those crazy B boards that I previously have run. Uh, when you bind it in D8 mode, it does seem to have a slightly better range performance than D16 mode, as many people have told me. However, it's not a like night and day difference. But the range performance on this thing is completely suitable, I think, it, with respect to the kind of speed that it has, the kind of battery life that it has. I, I think you'd have a hard time kind of getting outside range of the control consistently. You can, but consistently, it's unlikely you're gonna make, you're gonna make it to the top of a very tall building with this thing. However, it does dive buildings just fine, <laughs> if you wanna do that. It does a great job of that. And the camera, as you can tell, is far better performance than the one that comes in stock. Now, I still prefer it on 1S over 2S. However, I'm pretty sure most people are gonna run it on 2S, but the 300 milliamp 2S battery that I have at least, I don't know if that's what it's going to be shipping with, is not suitable for it. I think it does need a slightly larger battery, probably 400, 450 milliamp, 350 milliamp, absolute minimum in 2S. I haven't tested it in 450 milliamp 2S because I don't have a battery with that, that connector on it and I just haven't had the time to solder one up and test it. However, I'm pretty sure it could probably carry the weight fine because on 2S this thing is really touchy, has a lot more power than I care or something of on for something this size in this kind of product i like i keep saying i definitely prefer it on 1s now as for the durability it's been holding up just fine uh but i have broken two of these spars as i said in the original review i do wish that they would have just added uh they don't even need to make them thicker just add two more spars to each of these discs or these the prop guard would be you know really great it would probably strengthen all of them up and make them much less likely to break now they've told me that they've done a ton of testing to test the durability of this thing and they've just been ramming it into the wall over and over and over again non-stop to make sure it holds up now i have not been crashing this thing very hard it's been holding up great i mean it's been through a ton of crashes but I still managed to break the spars. When I told them this, they were pretty shocked that I was able to break the spars, but hey, everything breaks, I guess. And I would have liked to see at least one extra spar on there rather than just beefing up all the spars. But it is a light, I think it is a little bit more durable than the original Tidy Hawk um, overall frame. Otherwise, uh, I did lose a prop and I couldn't find it and I don't have any spare props. So that's why I'm making this video now because I don't have any more props. Uh, I gotta get a couple but I don't know how this fell off, but after 60, 70 packs, I finally crashed into something and it fell off. But I can also now see that it's 15,500 KV, or at least that's what it claims to be. And um, yeah, this is still an awesome quad, really awesome quad. I think that there is a lot of really cool stuff. I mean, not think, I know that there's really cool stuff coming from Emacs very soon. So um, yeah, pick this one up if you're looking for something in this category. Uh, like I said, this is going to be one of the quads that stays in my bag along with my toothpick quads because it is a suitable companion for my toothpick quad builds because those are great for outdoors and this is great for smaller, tighter spaces. And I live in a super metropolitan area where I can't fly anywhere. So these things, I'm flying these things more than anything else at this point. So they're really awesome. That's all I have to say. Floss your teeth. I. Uh, I know this is going to be a very popular quad because it really does perform really well.